Good day, folks. Once again, this is Teaching and Learning Near You. My name is Jake, and welcome to our new session for today. Today's session will talk about Padlet for 21st century writing and collaboration. Whenever we speak of Padlet, it's more of like imagining an online bulletin board that we display for our students where they can post, share, and collaborate their ideas. And since this is done virtually, whenever or wherever your students are, they can access your Padlet or online bulletin board. Here are just a few tips to start up your Padlet. So I think it's better to make sure that your students have access to a device, whether it's a phone, a tablet, or a computer. With Padlet, it's very simple. You just need to send them the Padlet link, and with that, they can access your uh, online bulletin board. Another way is to require students to put their names in each Padlet post. Since we don't like our students to create their Padlet account, like what we do as uh, educators or teachers, students need to type in their names so that we know the owner of that work. Another way is to establish specific internet etiquette or class rules in using Padlet. Whenever we speak of class rules, uh, it's more of the routine that we, we set with our students, the things that they, we would like them to follow. The, the danger of using the internet is that it's easier to copy and paste resources. We all understand that. One good example of a class rule or internet etiquette is to avoid plagiarism. And in order to avoid plagiarism, it's really important to make the questions or the Padlet tasks or think parent share activity that we provide with them is something that is personalized something that they can relate with for example share a story about your childhood uh, in that sense students can be able to um, relate to that question and look into uh, their own experience and share it among their classmates or it could be something funny like share your most embarrassing moment and how you overcome that. It will encourage collaboration and creativity by providing interesting questions, topics to discuss, search the web for additional resources, videos, or links attached to their posts. So for example, we already provided them that interesting question or topic. You can allow the students to add additional videos or links, and they can be creative with, with the videos or links that they attach to their posts. Meaning it could be a meme, it could be a, a video that is related to the idea. It could even be a news report if you're uh, discussing or your topic is something really serious or um, you would like them to do some research. They can also do that using Padlet. So it's as simple as one, two, three, and four, because you only need to first is to create basically an account for you. And once you have created an account, it's now easier to do your first Padlet. First thing to do is to style your Padlet. So choose a pre-made template or go bold with blank slate. So whenever we speak of a style, it can be any kind of style, whether a bulletin board, a flowchart style, a timeline, we'll show that to you a little later. Uh, the next thing is to invite collaborators or to invite your students by simply sharing the link. And the next part is to post, um, add photos, documents, web links, video, or music to make the text come alive. So this is the part where the students do their collaboration. They, they add their Padlet responses or their writing responses. And to top that response, they can also add photos, web links, videos, or even you know music that will be related to what they have posted. And finally, share, share the Padlet. They can share it amongst their friends, colleagues, and other teachers. Here's an example of a Padlet that we made during our session for the kids' standardization. And as you can see here, we have created a two stars in a wish format. A two stars in a wish 
is very basic. Uh, you just need to give, you can make use of this as an exit um, activity for your students. Two stars means the two things that they feel remarkable, that they uh, think is really good about the activity or the lesson for today. And a wish could be something that they would want to improve on or would want to have more ideas about it, okay? So this time we are going to Padlet and explore the features inside it. So just type Padlet by Google. First one that comes along will be the right choice, P-A-D-L-E-T for Padlet. And then, uh, okay, so let's say for example, we haven't created an account yet. Let's try to create an account first. So sign up if it's your first time to create an account. And then you can use your Google account, your Apple or Microsoft account. Let's just use our Google account to sign up. And then I'm not sure whether this one does have a Padlet already. Then I will try to enter my personal account. So that's as simple as that one. Um, pretty much it seemed like I've already used this account before, but that's just fine. So that's how you sign up. Just link it using your Google account. Now these are the main options or gallery options right here in your dashboard. Make a Padlet. You will create your own Padlet. Join a Padlet. Uh, this will be like a link that you need to share to your students. And you can copy and paste that link to your Google Classroom. And automatically, when the students click that, they will go to the Padlet. Gallery is a, a wide array of options of ready-made templates or Padlets that you can choose from. So fact or fiction, let's just take a look at that. Here you go. So up vote to agree or down vote to disagree. So we're sharing you an idea right here on how it is, this could work. Okay. So lemming are small animals. It commits suicide by jumping off cliffs. Some horses can grow mustache. So there's, these are example of, um, you know, padlets and we're looking into it, how creative it could be for your students. And then let's try another one. Which fast food chain has the best burger? Okay, so it could be anything personalized and students can just simply, you know, uh, collaborate and talk about it. They can rate it, okay? And then they can write their comments in it. So now I'm getting hungry. So that's just an idea on how you can add collaboration into writing and make writing something fun for your students without it you know looking very boring all the time so let's just go back to the to padlet and how do you make your own okay perhaps you might be wondering just click make a padlet okay these are the choices to start with a blank template and the most commonly used is the wall template, but you can also use other styles such as Canva, Stream, Grid, or even a timeline. Um, I'll just go ahead and try the wall style. Okay. And you have here my swanky wall. You can change the title anyway, okay? So it's up to you, so my brilliant Padlet, that could be. And just for example, that's a description. So I'm just showing you how it goes, okay? But you can be extra creative and make some more meaningful Padlets and collaboration activity for your students right there. That involves writing, of course. Okay, so type a title, type your description. You can choose if you'd like to put an icon in it, but these are the icons right there. So maybe it's about food. So if it's about food, let's say we have P 
pizza. I'm using pizza a lot. And just click back. That's how we do it. And then here is your unique uh, Padlet link. So padlet.com slash Michael J. You can also have the option to, I think, edit this one. Let's say QWERTY one, two, three, four here. Okay, so meaning to say uh, this is something that you can share with your students. It's easy to remember. And um, wallpaper, you can also change the wallpaper if you don't like that. You can make it solid colors, gradient, textures, and patterns, or pictures. Let's say we would like it textures and patterns, and you have it here. So that's it. And just click back. Once you selected something, just simply click back. Color schemes, you can make it light mode or dark mode. Okay, so. For the font, you can also change it, but we'll just set with the uh, one side of settings. Display author name of each post. Just remove that, because anyway, your students will be typing their names. New post comes first, okay. Comments, would you allow them to add comments? I love them to add, I love them to add comments because it adds up to the collaboration. Reaction, do you like them to grade it, give stars, vote, or things like that? I also love to, you know, share it with them and give them likes or things like that. And here you go, content filtering. If you're stern with the content, then you can require approval first, meaning to say the post will not be posted unless you approve of it. You can activate that option, or this is another good thing. Uh, some students they just love to add, not loud. It's also another good option: filter profanity. So you can replace bad words with nice emojis. So if accidentally students make use of some bad words right there or profane words right there, it will be changed to nice emojis, and therefore all the viewers. We'll see the emoji instead and not the bad word or the profane word, okay? So when you're done with that part, just click next. And that's it. You can now click start posting. How do students post? It's something like this. They will see a plus sign right here and the plus sign will allow them to type a title. So my brilliant self. Let's say you just like them to talk about anything under the sun. And then you start typing, and so be it. I'm just typing nonsense words right here. But I'm just sharing you the idea that they can do it that way. And then here you go. They can add a link that they found online. So that's how you, they do it. They just copy and paste the link. OK. So they can also add pictures. Okay. There. Okay. And um, what else can they do? Here, this ellipsis button or more button can show you more things that they can add. So let's say we would like to add a Google image. Mm. Okay. Brilliant friend. Like that then that's it it's already there so that's how fast it can go and automatically it's in your padlet and anyone can comment and like your post okay so we created just one example just for you to get to get an overview about it but like what I said in any kind of learning certain tools or apps technology or software, what you just need to do is to give it a try, check whether it works for you, check whether it can function, and whether your students can benefit out of it. But I'm telling you, they would benefit out of it. Just make sure you gave them an interesting question, you gave them an interesting collaboration activity, 
and they will enjoy that okay so uh, now okay so sorry how do you share it so here you go share and then copy link you can also get a QR code you can also embed it in your blog or your website so normally the easiest way is to copy the link okay and then try to go to Google Classrooms Here you go, you can add a link and paste. See, that's it. There you go, that's the Padlet and just click assign. So you can also add rubric. Remember, you can do that using Google Classroom and everything's right there, okay? We've just discovered recently for Google Classrooms link for Google Meet is already embedded in your Google Classroom. How do you activate that? Just simply click the settings, the gear option. I'll go back, the gear option, settings, and then just go down below and you see it right here, Meet. Visible to students, activate that and automatically, whenever students log into your Google Classroom, they can see the Meet or the Google Meet link. And how does it function? You just need to click the link and when it's time for you to start setting up a virtual class to your students, simply join the class and automatically everything's gonna work out, okay? So that's how it goes and I don't like to show my face right there. Pretty much they are innovating things for all of us. So if you have some questions or inquiries, feel free to ask. And thank you so much for joining us for our session with Padlet today. Thank you and have a good day.